there have been a, there have been a lot of a lot of trials in small cell lung cancer. Um, but not a lot of progress, and I would say that the, the reason is, is really not particularly well understood. We know it's a very, very aggressive disease um, that moves very quickly. We know it's a disease that tends to be highly sensitive to first-line chemotherapy. So response rates to first-line platinum etoposide are in the 50 to 70 percent range. Um, but all of the patients with metastatic disease will ultimately develop recurrence. And when they do, the disease tends to be much less chemosensitive than it was initially. Um, so I think part of the challenge is we don't have a very good understanding yet about why some tumors are chemosensitive and why they become chemoresistant, although we're starting to see some interesting data from the laboratory um, kind of moving us to, to better understand that. Some of that data has come recently from JT Poyer and Charlie Rudin at Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, suggesting that maybe epigenetic changes underlie sensitivity and resistance to chemotherapy. So I think that's part of the reason. I think the other reason is because we've, we've now seen several large genome sequencing studies in small cell lung cancer, and unfortunately none of these have revealed a clear targetable driver mutation. Um, so this is different than what we see in non-small cell where there are a subset of, of um, cancers that are driven by EGFR or ALK or ROS, whatnot. Um, we really don't see those kinds of drivers in small cell lung cancer. So to the best of our ability right now, there's not a way to clearly drug a target and uh, driver in small cell lung cancer.